So before we delve into kind of the text, let's look a little bit at uh, this piece as a piece of artwork. Um, and Nancy and Roxanne and Wendy, who have helped um, design and pick out this piece, please add anything from your own experiences of designing the piece as well. Um, we worked with a really incredible artist for this piece. Her name is Jeanette Hoven Warren. Uh, she actually created the um, U.S. Coastal Service Hanukkah stamp this year. That's one of her claims to fame. Um, but her primary artistry is actually with Torah curtains, um, uh, art curtains, and Torah covers. Um, and she just has this incredible technique of quilting. As you'll see, this is actually, if you come up and look close, it's a quilted piece made of different silks and fabrics and velvets um, to really make this piece come alive. Uh, when we were designing the piece, she would send us sketches of, um, you know, quick paintings, and it was almost impossible to imagine what it really, she kept saying, oh, in the real piece, it's going to be a lot more textured and vibrant, but it's hard to picture until you actually get here, um, and it really is true to life. Um, I guess I'll turn it over to you all before we explain a little of our thinking. What do you all see in this piece? I mean, what really jumps out at you uh, from the piece from the beginning? Um, it kind of looks like there was, it kind of looks like if the fighter started like at the butt at the sea surface, then it's, it's flaming up and it's above the water. Beautiful. So there's That's what it water looks like. and sky and some sort of flame emerging. I love that. What else do people see in this piece? Season. Reminds me of Mount Sinai at the bottom. Love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's gorgeous. Some sort of Mount Sinai is coming to Tara moment. Beautiful. I say the building's this. Bush. You know where a flame maybe burns, but doesn't extinguish. I love that. Yeah, even though the flame is sitting on the water, it's not extinguished. Beautiful. I have thought the pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, we're at the pillar of fire in here. We're being protected, and the other piece is that. Uh, it's longitudinal. You're you're clearly going on a pathway on a journey. Oh, yeah, you're going on a journey mm -hmm. through the piece, um, and and the um, pillar of fire that protected us in the in our journey in the desert and, and following us on our journey here. I love that. Yeah, it looks like it has strong roots and it's got very it's very directional and grounded. Beautiful. It's rooted. It's grounded like we're rooted in Torah. I love that. It reminds me of the Matthew. That was my first thought too. Yeah. When we put it up here. Mm -hmm. Look how perfectly those two pieces come yeah. from one another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The there's a need and the flame in the in the piece. Absolutely. Other thoughts that that emerge. Is it sunrise or sunset? Mm. Yeah, that's right. It's hard to know. The sunrise or sunset. I guess it depends what body of water it is. <laughs> the city. <laughs> <laughs> Moving <laughs> away a little bit. <laughs> um, Roxanne and Nancy and Wendy, I wonder if you have anything to add from your experiences of helping to design it. Well, I think there's a shin kind of embedded in the See in here, the abstract shin that's emerging in the water. That's what I would have added. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'll, I'll pick up a little bit of the thread that Rabbi Marcus mentioned. Um, part of the inspiration for this piece was, was who we are as Temple of Aaron and the really important place where we are situated and where, where we sit. Um, we could do a Shabbat tonight, it would have been a good night, the weather's so perfect. We could do a Shabbat our walk on the outside of the building mm -hmm. and all of the artwork on the outside of the building and the quotes that it, that it are grounded in um, is about water because we <laughs> hold such an important place on the, on the shore of the Mississippi River, and you know, this black, the black tiles here, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, the black tiles here are, are symbolic of the Mississippi River here, and we wanted to break that important. We didn't want this to be an art curtain that could be in any synagogue in the world. We wanted it to be unique for our unique community, um, and so we had the artist kind of build into the piece of Mississippi River, a river that's flowing through the piece here to situate us where we are. Um, and then, of course, the shin that's emerging from the water. I think so many people said it beautifully. Is it a, um, is it a burning bush? Is it a, a pillar of fire that never goes out? Is it a near tummy? I think all of those are exactly right. The shin represents God um, and, and God's supremacy, um, even, even above and beyond something like the Great Mississippi. Um, so I want to turn our attention um, to a few texts I wanted to bring to our piece to kind of elevate our understanding of the piece. Um, and they're all about Torah and water. Um, if you might not be surprised, you may or may not be surprised, that water is a very um, present metaphor throughout our 
biblical text and our rabbinic text for, for Torah. Um, does anyone off hand, can anyone think why that might be? Why why is water a potent metaphor for Torah? Because it's life giving. Well, it's life giving, it nourishes us. Purification. And purifies us. Beautiful. I just want, wanted to add with the artwork that it's not necessarily that you're focused on the flame coming up, but as you said, it's the river, it's the blue, it's this river, but it's pouring out towards us. That, that it, it becomes the, that river of, of water that comes. Absolutely, the blues of the chairs and the room kind of continuum of artwork as part of the river. Yeah. 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 Well, water can kind of take the shape of anything that it sits in or that lies in it, so the Torah can really have meaning to everybody. I love that. We are the vessels that yeah. are teaching them. That is absolutely beautiful. Moses was drawn from water. Water. We mm -hmm. walked through the Red Sea. That was like a birth moment coming through water. Absolutely, our people's story is inextricable from from water. From the body of water. Right. I mean, the Garden of Eden had the four rivers. Beautiful. Yeah. Our entire humanity story begins with water. In the creation of the world, the very first thing God did was separate the waters. So let's jump into a little bit here. I could have, we could have done a year-long course on Torah and water, but I, I tried to pick and choose here. So I, I came with three themes. The first is God more powerful than water. So that's the first theme that kind of emerges in our text. Um, and I wanted to start with this song, which is a song from Kabbalah Shabbat, you may be familiar with, um, because the artist actually brought this song to me. After she created this piece, who created the, um, the uh, painting for this piece, before she actually created the piece itself, she sent me this psalm, and she said, I'm looking at this piece, and this psalm is from emerging from this piece for me. Um, and as we do many of our Kabbalah Shabbat services in here, in front of this arc, I thought, what a perfect psalm to kind of ground this space. Um, so someone want to read Psalm 93 in English for me? The Lord is King, robed in grandeur. The Lord is robed, girdled with strength. The world stands firm, it cannot be shaken. Your throne stands from firm from of old. From, uh, from eternity you have existed. The river rises up on high. The rivers raise up their war. The rivers raise up their waves. Above the war of the vast waters and the majestic breakers of the sea is Adonai, majestic on high. Your decrees are indeed endured. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for all time. That was beautifully read. Um, and the part that, of course, emerged for this artist, I think, is the bolded lines here. The rivers rise up, Adonai. The rivers raise up their roar. The rivers raise up their waves. Above the roar of the vast waters and the majestic breakers of the sea is Adonai, majestic on high. And I think you can really see that in this space, that there's this beautiful, and we certainly see it in our Mississippi, there's this kind of majestic piece of, of, of um, artwork in the water, um, but even more powerful, even more majestic than the most majestic thing on earth is God. Um, but I, I'll say that I also kind of had a hard time understanding this piece, because I think we can intellectually maybe understand God more powerful than water, um, but I certainly don't have personal experience um, with that kind of relationship with water. Um, so I wanted to bring in, um, on the bottom of the page is a tefina, which is a um, Yiddish prayer, uh, a Yiddish woman's prayer uh, that, um, uh, that was um, written and prayed by a woman who was embarking on a transatlantic journey to the New World. Um, and this really spoke to me and kind of brought alive for me um, what this what this song would mean. She writes, where does God's spirit move? Where does one sense God? One is often more aware of God when traversing the great ocean. There on the ocean, one notices how strong and mighty divinity is. As you have done humanity many kindnesses, so do I beg of you to have my trip succeed. May the ocean be calm and the ship reach its destination. May it not be struck below the waterline nor run aground. Let not the sailors sleep during their night watch so that ships will not collide. <clears throat> Protect us from all misfortunes that might happen at sea, for your supremacy is over all. Bring me to a safe landing, uninjured with nothing to prevent my disembarking. May I find all those to whom I go healthy and happy, 
as you silence the ocean in the midst of the storm, so may you silence all the enemies of Israel who stow, stew and fret about us. Pour out your spirit over all your creatures that they may acknowledge your oneness. <coughs> may they be filled with divine knowledge so that the holy words of the prophet Isaiah be fulfilled. The land will be full of the recognition of God as the waters covering the sea. May it be speedily and in our time. Amen. It really struck me as, you know, that's, that's the truth of the, I think what this psalm is meant to say, that the ocean is majestic and beautiful, but it's also threatening and it's life-threatening. And I'm just picturing this woman going on this journey um, that, that very well could have ended in tragedy um, and her composing this, this deep prayer of her heart. And I know that I personally will kind of hold that prayer with me as I use as this piece. I'm going to turn into two other things, and we're going to go a little bit more quickly. So water as Torah, um, this is uh, uh, something that came up earlier, that water is nourishing and life-giving, as Neil said. Um, and I think that that is certainly true. So we're not going to read this whole text from Baha um, but let me just ask you, does anyone know why do we read Torah on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays? Market days. Market days, beautiful. Ezra instituted those because those are the days that there were market days. So people were gathered together anyway, might as well learn some Torah. However, so okay, that is in here. However, the Gemara says, but what did it, Ezra may have done that, but it, it was already a practice before Ezra instituted this. This is a very old practice that predated Ezra. So where did it come if it predated the market, if it predated that era? And the Talmud gives us a different answer. Does anyone know what the other answer could be? Hint, it's about water. Desert without water, can't go three days without water, right after the Song of the Sea, in case anybody wants it, right after the Sure, that yeah. Thank you, Larry. Absolutely. So I even Googled it to see if this is current science, and it seems to be the case that you can't, the max amount of time you can go without water is about three days. Um, and the rabbis, even in the Talmud, had somehow figured this out. Um, and they took it from exactly as Larry said, from Exodus, right before a few a few chapters before the story we'll read tomorrow. And Moses led Israel onward from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So the, our ancient Israelites went three days without any water, and our rabbis learned from this that um, just as we can only go no more than three days without life-giving water, so too should we not go more than three days without life-giving Torah. That's another interpretation of what we can be seeing here, that instead of, um, in addition to God being majestic over the water, is also kind of Torah and God emerging from the water, that just as water is life-giving, so too is Torah life-giving. We see here that there's uh, this is a common theme also in Deuteronomy. Um, uh, as may my rain comes out, my, my discourse comes out as the rain, and my speech distill as the dew, like showers on young growth, like droplets on the grass. So this is his prayer, praying and hoping that his teachings, his Torah to the Jewish people, comes down to them like rain and like dew, like this life-giving sustenance. Um, but I want to turn to the final uh, to the final comment here, which is just one tiny little uh, verse from Proverbs, um, and this is water as reflection and relationship. Um, can I ask someone to read this one verse from Proverbs twenty seven on the bottom of the last page? As face answers to face in water, so does one man's heart to another. Oh. In Hebrew, kamaim hapanim lapanim can lev haadam leadam. Thus, as water is face to face, so too is the heart of man to man. Does anyone want to take a stab at, at, what, this, at what this proverb could mean? The, the face in water is your reflection. And so, um, as you treat others, that is a reflection of, of who you are as a, as a person, your heart to uh, those in your community and uh, shows your. Your, your true image. I think that's exactly right. Just as when you gaze into uh, a pond or a lake and you see your reflection in that water, so too do you see your true reflection in the hearts of the people around you. Um, and this verse really kind of struck true for me for example of Aaron, um, and for how we use this space and for how we use this art. 
you know, this place is a gathering place for Torah study and for God and for deep um, understanding of our tradition, certainly. Um, and it's also a place for deep relationship with one another. We gather in a space to hold one another during Shiva community. And we gather in a space to be there for one another when we say you were site for our loved one. We gather in a space together again and again. I think that's so true of the Torah of Temple of Aaron. Um, and what I love about this is it's saying that Torah and water and relationships are all one. Um, just as we see here um, that the reflection, you could say that the shit is emerging from the water, or you could say that it's kind of reflected back into the water um, with the beautiful blues and purples here. Um, and I think that that's exactly right for, for our community, um, that when we gather together in community, um, when we're gathering together to be with one another um, in friendship and love and community, or to study Torah, or to pray, or to hold one another in times of joy or sorrow, <coughs> all that is Torah, all that is nourishing and life-giving, all of that is connection to the, to the one true God. Uh, so I hope that you can carry some of our learning today every time you enter into this space and you um, engage with our beautiful new our article. Um, so I want to uh, deeply thank everyone who has been involved in this um, in this project. Um, and uh, it's truly going to be a um, a lasting a lasting piece of artwork for our community. So thank you.